Hi, this is Perry, and in this video I'm going to tell you about the six steps you need to follow to create a cosmetic formula. This is just preparation for the launch of our upcoming Practical Cosmetic Formulating course, which is due to launch uh, in just a couple of weeks. Formulating is one of the most enjoyable aspects of being a cosmetic chemist. This is when you get to blend all of the cosmetic science you've learned with your creative inspirations. It's how you can make your mark as a formulating cosmetic chemist. The following six steps will help you take your ideas and convert them into functioning cosmetic products. All right, step one is to define your product. Before you get started, you need to think about what you're going to make. Figure out what functions you want your product to achieve. Is it a cleansing product, a moisturizer, a coloring product, or, or maybe a combination of factors? Also, think about the aesthetic characteristics like color, thickness, clarity, etc., and the cosmetic product form. Write these parameters down so you'll know when you're done whether you've been successful. Remember, it is always helpful to have a target product with characteristics that you are trying to match. Be sure to get a sample to look at and feel. Step two, find a starting formula. The next thing you need to do is figure out a good starting formula. Starting formulas can be found from a variety of sources. You can look at some of the most useful cosmetic science books. You can also look at online formularies like the one from happy.com or, or Innovadex. Raw material suppliers like Crota or Rhodia also have formularies that you can use. Another useful source is patents. You can use Google Patents or the USPTO.gov website to find formulas. And of course, you can talk to a colleague who may be able to share one of her starting formulas with you. Finally, if you work at a big company, they will usually have an archive of old formulas uh, that will give you a great starting basis. Or you can check out our website. We have a whole listing of where you can get starting formulas. But remember, starting formulas are not meant to be finished formulas. Step three, you have to prepare your batches. Once you have your starting formulas, you'll want to determine how much you want to make and create a spreadsheet which lists out how much of each ingredient you need. Of course, you'll need to get all of those ingredients too. And you'll need the equipment to mix up your batches. Then you'll need to list the specifications that you will test when the batch is finished. After that, you'll have to gather up all the raw material and processing equipment needed to make the batch. Next, put on your safety glasses and start making your batch. Step four, making the batch. Making a cosmetic product is a lot like cooking. You weigh out or measure your ingredients, you mix them together as dictated in the procedure, and you heat and cool as required. During the entire process, you should be writing detailed notes and observations in your lab notebook. These will come in handy when you need to make refinements in future prototypes. Step five, test your batch. Once you've finished your formula, you'll want to test it to see how successful you were. After letting the sample equilibrate to room temperature, you take appropriate measurements like pH and viscosity to see if they're within the specifications you set out. Also weigh the batch to see how much water weight was lost during heating and cooling process. If you lost more than a few percentage of water, you may want to add that water back to make up the difference. In addition to the specification test, you should also do some performance tests to see how well the product functions. At the very least, try the product on yourself. If the formula meets your satisfaction, then you'll want to do a stability test. Finally, step six, revise the formula and repeat. After you've tested the product and determined where it doesn't quite measure up, you'll need to make adjustments to see if it can be improved. I've found that the knockout experiments are the most helpful way to figure out the effect that every ingredient has on the final formula. Once you know what the ingredients do, you'll know which ones to increase or decrease to improve your formula. After a dozen or so revisions, you should have a formula that meets your needs. Cosmetic formulating is as much an art as it is a science. As you gain more experience, you'll find ingredients that you like to work with and others you like to avoid. You'll develop your own style and ideally make products and formulas that are genuinely unique to you. In fact, I always like to add a signature in my formulas by using some ingredient at a percent that includes the number 44. It didn't usually have much effect on the formula, but it did make me feel like the formula was my own creation. And it was. I'm Perry Romanowski, and thank you for watching. I look forward to working with you in our upcoming Practical Cosmetic Formulating class.